and welcome again to Cottage Talk. I am Russ Golden. This is my five takeaways from Fulham's 3-0 loss to Arsenal on Sunday. This is what I'm taking away from this unfortunate loss for Fulham. There's a good amount I can take away from this, and I'll be sharing it in this show for about 15 minutes. As always, please do subscribe on YouTube and Apple Podcasts. It does help other Fulham supporters find us. I will mention that during this week, I will be having some shows, some Fulham news and notes shows, and you'll be hearing my commentary on all the speculation with Jao Polina, and then, of course, on Marco Silva. I'll be talking about that along with some other things as well. But this show is a continuation of the show we did yesterday, Cottage Talk Full Time, where I did a show with Max and Emilio, who was at the match, witnessed it. So this now is basically looking at what I'm taking out of it. We had our initial reaction show. Now it's time for my five takeaways. So let's get going at number five. And number five is a pretty obvious one. Fulham's lack of depth was on display against Arsenal. A couple of them you can't help. One, obviously you can't help with Jao Polina being out. I'll be talking a little bit about him and just a few minutes, but that really hurts because you don't really have a like-for-like replacement for Jao Polina. So that shows the lack of depth. William, unfortunately, picked up an injury. You don't have anyone that can really do what he does. You do have some players like Wilson and James, but they're not at the level of William. So you take William out of it, you are hurting yourself. You need players on that level. And uh, I'm sorry, right now, Harry Wilson and Dan James are just not at Williams' level. So that hurt them. What else hurt them? Because the depth situation goes beyond the two players I just mentioned. You look at the bench. The bench was shocking for this match. You have to dress an extra goalkeeper because you don't have enough players. That's something to look at. That has to be an issue. Fulham do not have enough depth. You have a lot of young players. Luke Harris has been on the bench. You have a young fullback that's on the bench for the first time. So you have all this going on because Cedric Soares couldn't play because of being an Arsenal player. So that hurt you as well. There are all these other factors. Then you look at, the players who were on the pitch, and I look at the fullbacks, and they looked a little tired. We're talking about Kenny Tete, then Anthony Robinson, who has not been himself, and I think they could be tiring out a little bit. You could say the same thing for Harrison Reed, Andres Pereira. The lack of depth, I think, is really starting to show itself. Fulham do not have the opportunity to really rotate, and as we're watching all these matches. It's unfortunate because there really are not enough players in there to basically give you enough security that you could take an Anthony Robinson out. Kenny Tete potentially with Cedric Soros, but as we're seeing with Pereira, and then of course with Reed, what are you going to do? Sasa Lukic had to play because there was no Paulinha. There is this lack of depth, I believe, throughout the team including center back. The only position that I think that they have good backup right now is goalkeeper. Let's just say what it is. Goalkeeper, they have good depth when you have Marek Rodak. Beyond that, I'm looking at the depth and I'm thinking they need depth all over the pitch. That's just my opinion because I don't know if the wingers that we have backing up the starters and William, because I think you can go three deep on there. But can you really count on Harry Wilson right now? I'd like to think so, but he has not been up to the level that we saw last season. And Dan James has just not cut it, unfortunately. It just hasn't worked out. Then, of course, you got up front. You can play Vinicius, but he's at no level at that same level as Mitro. So lack of depth is showing itself, and this is something that needs to be addressed for next season. Will it hurt them the rest of the season? It could, but I don't think so because I think that the matches coming up 
are winnable matches. There are several of them. I think they're going to be okay. But as Emilio said on full time, there was a similar pattern going on there right now with Fulham from last season. There was this swoon that happened after the beginning of the year. Fulham did not end the season well. Let's just call it what it is. Are we seeing this again? Are the players tired? Are we seeing a potential situation that Leeds saw with Bielsa? The players just working so hard, and there isn't that much depth because he uses such a small squad. Something to consider as we go into the end of the season and then, of course, into next season. Fulham's lack of depth, huge on display, and that's why it's my number five. Number four, this is a curious one, and I don't understand it because I'm not saying Tosin is tuned out because I don't think he is. I think he's trying, but I think the number one center back to go along with Ream right now, in my opinion, has to be Diop. Why did Marco go in this direction? I actually disagree with Marco. He would know a lot better than me if strategy had to do with playing Tosin potentially. But Diop should be your one of your two starting center backs. And I thought this hurt you in this match. I thought that Tosin was responsible for the first goal. Let's just call it what it is. And I don't think he was that good in this match. I would have felt much more comfortable. And I think Fulham would have been better off with it being Diop and Reim. But he, for whatever reason, he went to Tosin and Reim. And I thought that was a mistake. That's why that is my number four takeaway. I don't get that. I certainly do not get the decision to start Tosin in this match. Number three, Fulham currently have no answers when Paulina can't play. As we said in full time, they've given up 10 goals in three games that Paulina has not been able to play. That's shocking, but it just shows that they do not have any answers right now. I think that their intentions are to try to make it work with Lukic and also Harrison Reed picking up the slack. But I think with Harrison Reed, I think when Paulinha is out, it doesn't allow him to be the player he is. His role changes. And I think that he cannot be that defensive midfielder that you need in the Premier League. It should be Paulina. It will be Paulina the rest of the season. So it was a huge domino effect. Without him, we've now seen it in three matches. When you don't have Paulina, it I think it affects Reed. Lukic is just getting up to speed. It's going to take him a little bit. And this is where Arsenal made their hay. Arsenal dominated in central midfield. And I think a good amount of it came from the fact that Fulham did not have a suitable replacement for Paulinha. They just don't. They are trying to do it with a combination of Reed and Lukic, and it just isn't good enough. It simply is not good enough. So moving forward for the rest of the season, we just have to hope that Paulinha can stay healthy and not get any more situations of suspensions because that would be devastating for the rest of the season. They need Paulinha for the rest of the matches because I don't have any confidence that they can win without him. So this is something to look towards, not just the rest of the season, but moving forward for next season. Fulham need Paulinha to stay at Fulham beyond this season, and they need a suitable backup because they certainly do not have one. Number two, this is actually a positive. The last two are positive. So my number two is Fulham's improved play in the second half was important for the players and the coach. So Fulham were dominated in the first half by Arsenal. It wasn't even close. And as I just mentioned, the play in central midfield was just, it was one-sided. It was all about Arsenal. They dictated everything. Fulham had no answers. However, Fulham gave up three soft goals. They absolutely did. They can do better. Where was the intensity? Why did Fulham's heads drop after the first goal? I haven't seen it that often with this team under Marco Silva. I saw it in this match. They talked about it on the broadcast. For whatever reason, 
after Arsenal scored the first goal, it seemed like heads dropped, confidence dropped, and Arsenal took over. Why? That is the point of this that I just don't understand. They should have enough confidence that they can play with Arsenal, but they didn't. Until they got to halftime, obviously Silva said something to them because we saw it improve play in the second half. And I know what everyone's going to say when you're listening to this. Well, Arsenal took their foot off the gas. Maybe they did, but Fulham definitely put the pressure on and they played with higher intensity and they were really playing for each other in the second half. In fact, I was very happy with how they played. They were unlucky not to score a goal. Would that have changed the match? Probably not, but it would have been good to get a goal, to not give Arsenal a clean sheet. I thought Fulham deserved the goal from their play in the second half. I thought they played hard. I wanted to see that in the first half, and I think they lacked the confidence that they could play with Arsenal after they gave up that first goal, regrouped in the second half, and we saw that same team, the Fulham 11, when they, when you play as a team in the second half. That's something to hold your hat on, absolutely, to really say, you know what, we can hang in there with Arsenal. I know, 3-0, Arsenal are on cruise control. Doesn't matter. You still have to show up. Fulham showed up in the second half. That showed me something because it could have very easily gone 4 or 5-0. And they didn't let that happen because they played on the front foot and they tried to get something out of the match. It would have been a lot to get three goals in that second half, but they gave the effort. And that was encouraging. That's why that's my number two. Coming up next, I'm going to share my number one takeaway from this foam loss to Arsenal. Okay, to end this episode of Cottage Talk, here is my number one takeaway from the match. First of all, disappointing loss here, 3-0. Absolutely disappointing. But you also played against the team that I think might be the best team in Europe right now, Arsenal. You had improved play in the second half. But most importantly, I think you showed that Europe is still in play. You did not hurt yourself by losing to Arsenal. In fact, I think you might have helped yourself in one way because you showed that you can play with Arsenal in that second half. Europe is absolutely still in play. And if you don't think so, all you have to do is look at the matches coming up for Fulham. This is why Europe is still in play. After they play Manchester United in the Cup, then they're on the road against Bournemouth. That's followed up by playing West Ham. Then they are on the road against Everton, home against Leeds United, and then they're on the road against Aston Villa before they face Man City at Craven Cottage. Those are the upcoming matches. But then you also have Leicester City at home, Crystal Palace at home, Southampton on the road, and you end with Manchester United. There are still a ton of points there for Fulham to grab. What's interesting coming up for Fulham is this match with Manchester United. I'll talk about that more this week because the loss of Casemiro, I think, is going to really help Fulham, and you'll have Paulinho back. He is their Paulinho. Without him, I'm curious how Manchester United looks, so keep that in mind. We go into an international break, and then Fulham will have time to get the rest that they probably need and get ready for this stretch run where I think they will be ready to win more matches and get further up that table. And I think Europe is still in play. I'm not giving up on Europe. I know others are thinking 10th would be great. Uh Uh-uh. I think 7th or 6th would be great. It's not crazy to still think about Europe. I'm not giving that up yet, and neither should you. That's my opinion on that. Okay. Well. That's going to do it for this episode of Cottage Talk. As I mentioned, the next episode will be a full news and notes show, and I'll be talking a little bit about the speculation surrounding Marco Silva and Jao Pauli, and I have some interesting thoughts on that. As always, please do subscribe in YouTube and Apple Podcasts. It does help other Fulham supporters find us. Well, that's going to do it for this episode. 
My name is Russ Goldman. Thank you as always for watching and listening to Cottage Talk, now part of the Talk Sport Fan Network.